Welcome to the Myopia Podcast, where we give you the latest myopia research, clinical topics, and industry insights. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all awesome myopia content. And now to our host, a massive myopia manager himself, Dr. David Kading. Hey, friends, Steve Keating. Uh, before we get into the show, I wanted to mention that Team has supported this particular podcast, and I'm really grateful for them reaching out to us. And they mentioned that they would like to give uh, members of the Myopia Podcast community a $250 discount off of their first virtual assistant. If you have not considered uh, bringing in a virtual team, uh, I can attest to how wonderful it is. Over the last two years, we brought in uh, about 10 team members onto our uh, practice. We've used different staffing services and we've had issues over the years with our staff not getting paid, having issues here or there, issues with the communication. And that has been really taken care of since we've joined up with team and their uh, their group of virtual people. Uh, it's been fantastic and I would highly recommend that you consider doing it for your office. They can do things by answer the phone for you. They can uh, check uh, insurances. They can get patients calls they can check on uh describing for you in the exam room and do a host of different things particularly in the myopia community it's great to have somebody that can be in charge of these sort of things checking on those myopic patients seeing how they're doing and giving them a care call after they've had orthokeratology for a day uh, and just kind of be a right hand to you in the exam room or to your billing team or your front desk consider higher team.com h-i-r-e-t-e-e-m.com or click the show notes to get the 250 dollars discount when you sign up now back to the show thanks for listening to this episode i want to again thanks team for their support of this particular podcast uh they have been a great supporter of the myopia community helping to uh make clinicians and offices run better whether it's calling and scheduling appointments whether it's answering the phone helping with billing issues scribing in the exam room whatnot having a virtual team member in your practice is a real show stopper so with that, I want to thank team again for their support. Check them out at hireteam.com. That's H-I-R-E-T-E-M.com or click the notes in the show description below. Thanks again to team. Well, thank you for joining us for this episode. Uh, today, we are joined by Tony Sommer, and we're going to be speaking a little bit about what's going on with Cooper Vision. But first, I want to let you know we're recording live from the Vision by Design meeting 2023 in Chicago. And uh, if you are listening to this and you've never been to a Vision by Design, you should check out the meeting October 2nd through the 5th, 2024. The meeting is in Dallas. So check it out. Vision by Design is a great meeting, the meeting for myopia management for the most part. And uh, it's just fantastic. So Tony, I uh, have been waiting for about a year and a half to try to get you on the podcast. We finally narrowed down a time to do it here at the meeting. Would you please tell everybody a little bit about yourself? You've hiked the Appalachian Trail or some of it. Some of it. You've uh, conquered uh, multiple companies and now you're uh, working with Cooper Vision. Tell us a little bit about you and what you're doing for myopia. Terrific. So um, I've been fortunate to work in the eye care industry off and on since 2004. And I've got a great origin story, and we'll talk about it someday. It's a lot of fun. It involves people we all know. But uh, I've worked for Siba Vision. I have worked for Bausch & Lomb. And now I work for Cooper Vision. And in between Bausch and Cooper, I worked at Visionary Technologies. Yep. So I've had a variety of roles in uh, marketing and sales and sales management. And also at a startup with VTI, I was employee number seven. Yeah, yeah. So that was a lot of fun and very, very different from what I do today yeah. at Cooper Vision. So you've had a couple roles at Cooper. Tell us what you're doing now. Like, what are you involved in? So I'm involved right now um, in the uh, myopia and specialty space. So what does that mean in real English? So all of the RGPs, mm -hmm. as well as responsibility for my site within the Americas. And we define the Americas as Alaska to Argentina. Yeah, yeah. So you and I both know that it wasn't too long ago that Cooper Vision didn't have a single GP lens no, under their name. Not at all. So this has been a huge wave in the last, what, 
six, seven six years, years. Yeah. six years mm -hmm. uh, that this has come into bay. What was Cooper Vision thinking? Like, what was the grand scheme here? The thought about specialty lenses. Do you do you have any idea what the thought from the uppers was? Yeah, actually. Um, so at Cooper Vision, we pride ourselves on being able to fit nearly any patient. Mm -hmm. We're very proud of our broad suite of soft contact lenses, as well as our made-to-order lenses. It's a natural extension to venture into specialty lenses in order to broaden our reach and allow us to help ECPs touch every possible patient. Yeah. So seven years ago, the idea was born that we should create a specialty to vision. Yeah. Focused primarily at first, believe it or not, on myopia management ortho -K, and it was very right. nascent at the time. Right. Right. And we were the first mover in the large companies there. Yeah. Yeah. And that was with the Paragon acquisition? Paragon acquisition in uh, 2017. Yeah. Um, along with an acquisition in Europe of Procornia. Okay. Yep. Yep. And over the years, there's been several major companies that have been acquired and are now under the Cooper Vision Specialty Division. Mm -hmm. And I think you told me recently that including the Specialty Division is my site has recently come underneath that as well. Yeah, and it's actually... In some way. In some way, the specialty group was brought into mainstream Cooper Vision. Yeah. And so all those product groups and the, and the people that I worked with before are now brought into the flagship, and we have additional responsibility for my site. So yeah. we're, we are resources across the entire myopia management spectrum, along with managing our other specialty lenses. Yeah. So you're encountering practitioners both in the, the orthokeratology and the soft multifocal. You know, uh, us practitioners, we're trying to make these little dents in our practice. You're mm -hmm. trying to make dents with us in, in the practices. What are some things that you've learned or that you're strategizing to help practitioners at Cooper Vision? How are you trying to help us be better? Yeah, I think we have a very shared objective, which is how do we make myopia management mainstream? And I think that is an objective for all of the uh, eye care practitioners as well as industry, the strategics. The biggest issues that we find are not earth shattering. Mm. They really aren't. And that's why I look to leaders and voices in myopia management, such as yourself and several of your colleagues, because the, the question I always get asked, and it doesn't matter what business card I'm carrying, is what do I say? Mm. What do I say to the parents mm -hmm. about this? Because myopia as a disease, which we all believe it is, yeah. is not a mainstream disease state. Right. It's not something that all the parents talk about at the ball game, mm -hmm. right? While they're watching the kids play soccer. It's not about myopia, right? If they do happen to go to an eye care practitioner for an annual exam, is my child had to get stronger glasses? Yeah. Or we're debating contact lenses over, over glasses right now. Right. Right? And will people speak? And when I talk to eye care practitioners, it's like, what do I say? How do I, how do I bring that conversation forward? How do I put it in my work stream? Yeah. Yeah. What are some, uh, what are some of the strategies that your team and that you're building out to help practitioners with that because you can't just give us the products and expect us to run with them right no. that's 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 been a fail failed uh endeavor across all all aspects of eye care um but this one's a little tougher than handing me a soft spherical contact lens for a uh you know minus two uh 43 year old right right what what are some things I know you guys have some tools and some strategies, uh, you know, maybe even at the granular level, but also I know you're going to conferences and you're educating. You've got these meetings that are put together every once in a while around the country, mm -hmm. around my site and especially lenses. Share with us a little bit about that because uh, people may not know what Cooper Vision is doing. Well, at first, we're still focused on education and awareness. Yeah. Of myopia is actually something that you should treat. Big deal. It's a big deal, mm -hmm. and that hasn't reached everybody. Um, one of the things, the constructs that I do, being a marketing and sales professional, is you look at the bell curve, right? You can use the bell curve for any distribution of any data, set of data points. If you look at a bell curve of the 42,000 optometrists in the United States, it's very clear 
that the folks that are on board with myopia management are the front end, the innovators and early adopters. Where we're trying to bring myopia management is into the next third, mm -hmm. which is 14,620 roughly. Mm -hmm. okay? And those folks need to get the message, but they are also not aficionados. They are not here at Vision by Design. They don't go to GSLS, yep. right? Those are the people we're trying to reach because a product like MySight is tailor-made for yeah. that. First FDA, person mm -hmm. only, right? For a defined set with tons of evidence behind it. Seven years yeah. clinical studies. Believe it or not, we have to get that message out because for many optometrists, they're running a business. Yeah. Or they're working in a corporate store and they're trying to respond to all the demands that they have there. Tony, do you think it's the myopia is not a disease? Do you think that's what's keeping us from buying in? Do you think it's the uh, complication around becoming a myopia management practice with implementing fees? Is it the conversation with parents about what's going on? I know it's all of them, but It's all of them. In fact, but, there's uh, a magical slide that has nine buckets that we're yeah. studying and commissioning research on. And, um, and it's different in different parts of the world, right? There's different preferences for treatment plants and what they're gonna use, whether it's atropine, ortho-K, what's the first thing they reach for? A lot of that is regionalized and market-driven, right? Yeah. Um, we're a great soft contact lens market, and of course here at the show, we reach for orthokeratology. Most of the questions that we get are, they do understand that it's a disease. You know, from talking to hundreds of practitioners and looking at a lot of the literature, people do agree in the industry and the clinicians that it's a disease. What happens though is how do I change how I do my work yeah. in order to fit this in? You know, I'm not a glaucoma person, but I do know that, you know, a lot of the a lot of the folks would counsel Thursday is glaucoma day. Yeah. And that's what we do, right? I think that is kind of the thing that people need to get a message of this is how I'm going to approach this in my practice. What is the workflow? And there's many, many different um, approaches that I've seen, and they vary by different successful practitioners do it differently. But ultimately, it's a full team approach, and being able to be confident that what you're recommending is what the patient needs. Yeah. Right? And the fee structure is always something that people struggle with. Yeah. In optometry. So. Um, you know, there's practitioners that are out there who are not approaching myopia management. Maybe it's a small practice. Their Cooper rep calls on them and, you know, sees them not very often because they're a smaller practice. What, what would you say that somebody could do if they're like, I, you know, I, I'd like to get in on this and mm -hmm. how can they approach Cooper vision mm -hmm. to get started? doing myopia management because I know that your tools are beyond dropping off a fit set. Yes. Right? Especially uh, with this. Yeah. And uh, so what, what would you recommend the steps would be if somebody is interested in getting started, you know, uh, 2022 uh, review of practitioners, contact lens spectrum published this, the people that are doing myopia management, 60% of them, are pulling for a soft multifocal as their primary yes. source. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to do orthokeratology. You don't yeah. have to do atropine. You don't have to do soft multifocals. There is something to get you started. Yes. Soft multifocals are a great place to be if you're already fitting soft contact lenses. Yes. What would you recommend is a start for people? How do, how do they, do they just call up their Cooper rep? What would you recommend? So if they contact their, their Cooper representative, um, they will be entered into, and they just ask for certification. I'd, I'd like to get started with my site, and I'd like the link what to the certification What do you mean certification? What, what do you mean by that? Just like um, most specialized therapies, there's certification process. It takes 35 minutes. Yeah. It's self-paced. It's online. Mm -hmm. it's, it, and it's entertaining. It's not it's just a boring thing. It's entertaining. It's engaging, yeah. and it talks about... Uh, myopia and it talks about the product and it talks how to get started yeah you know and once you enter into that you can be entered into the entire myopia management experience for Cooper vision 
and we can assign a myopia management specialist to walk you through the process and get you engaged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, would the same be true if I'm interested in getting started with uh, orthokeratology with Cooper? There are several companies, uh, several products that you have. Mm -hmm. Same sort of deal? Yeah, very same sort of deal. So you can call your Cooper Vision specialty field sales representative, your account executive, or you can go to, in the case of CRT, you can go to paragonvision.com, mm -hmm. CRT.com. You can go to any of our websites, and you, it's very easy to find the link to get certified. Now, getting certified in orthokeratology is actually a regulatory requirement, yep. but it is still simple and entertaining. We've updated all of those videos as well. Yeah. Okay, so uh, as, as I look at the growth curve of Cooper Vision in the specialty and the myopia arena over the last six years, mm -hmm. it's been a really, really steep curve. There's been an incredible innovation. There's been incredible consolidation, bringing all this together, helping us spread the word. Where do you think we're going to be in about five years? What do you see happening and, you know, better education? There's going to continue to be support. What do you, what are you hoping for? Well, I know we, you're a visionary. Well, I'm fortunate that I work with a company of visionaries who've yeah. been working on this longer than I've been there. The, the, we, our mission is to help provide evidence-based treatments for practitioners. Our vision... Like six-year data on my site. Seven, actually. S excuse me, seven-year. <laughs> <laughs> seven-year data on my site. That's incredible, right? It is. It is. It's the most extensive... Myopia research study. Yeah. In, in a product, right? Yeah, it's yeah. the gold standard. It, it really is. Really is. Good. We're very proud of it. It's well done. The... But our vision is actually a world where children can be treated, right? I mean, myopia, there's no safe level of myopia, as we all know. We've yeah. all had that quote. We quoted ourselves. We need to increase our education and make myopia management mainstream. That is our focus. That is our rallying call. Literally, internally, we talk about it. How do we take this from a specialty, air quotes, to mainstream, to something that everybody offers? And you hit upon a golden moment. The golden moment is simply this. My site is an easy to use lens. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows how to fit contact lenses. Everyone does. And it is not difficult to fit, right? There are barriers and objections which can all be worked through because it's mainly just an education process. Yeah. The questions are very germane and the same. How do I talk to the parents? How do I show the value of myopia management? Because it's, we all know eye problems are not like stomach problems, right? There's no pain, there's no bleeding, yeah. but we know what's going to happen. Higher likelihood of, of trauma yeah. when you get to my age, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so if we can halt it, yeah. we're in a good place, yeah. right? Yeah. But you can't prove a negative. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Anything uh, you'd like to say in closing? I'm just really proud of the industry, not just of Cooper Vision. Right. We, we are the leaders, right? And we take action, which is why we built this portfolio. Yeah. But this is a heavy lift to make this mainstream. And what I really enjoy about industry is that not just the industry, but the profession and the healthcare community is rallying around this. Yeah. And the WCO. Yep. GMAC. Yep. GMAC, definitely. We we're very proud of being founding members of yep. GMAC and having been the chair for a couple of years. Yeah. So there is a lot of cross industry and um, cross healthcare community activity that's going on. I'm very, very proud of that. And yeah. Cooper Vision's a leader there. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for being on the show, my man. You bet. It was always a pleasure. Yeah. And I, I you saw me selling the podcast. <laughs> uh, he was here early <laughs> selling the podcast, which is very appreciated. So thank you very much. And thank you for joining me for this episode. Make sure to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for future episodes. Again, we're recording live from Vision by Design 2023. And uh, make sure to uh, look out for uh, Vision by Design 2024. It's going to be in Dallas in October. Check out the, uh, the AAOMC's website for more information. Thanks and have a great day. One, two, three, four. Thank you for tuning in to the Myopia Podcast. If you enjoy our content, please leave a five-star review. And don't forget to subscribe for more great episodes.